Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad you're with us on this Friday morning. Good show line up here. Let me rephrase that. Great show line up here. And we'll get started with our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, Drew Pollard. Hardworking crew taking care of our everyday comfort needs, 77, 67, high and low. And that rain's coming in. They say it may come in tonight. It's going to rain tomorrow. Just have to walk around it. And, uh, but we're going to talk about uh, some things we can do this weekend later on. Water temperature right now is a 65.1. Our river reading is brought to us by Panama City Coca-Cola. And we know what's going on. That price cola is on the way up. It's reading this morning, 13.5. And the Chalk Tassie Caraville is reading right now uh, at a, well, actually, I don't have a reading. Uh, check it out, 8.9, I think. It was 8.9 yesterday. Anyway, both rivers are rising. They're going up pretty strong, and it'll be that way for the next couple of days, so be aware of that. Now, our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. One more good day, two more good, last weekend of good tides, because next week we have some neap tides, but today is some good tides, really good tide. Low this morning, right now, 6.01 and high tonight at 8.55. And don't forget, Sunday is daylight savings time. And this order seemed a little bit early this year, but we need to go ahead and put it on and uh, automatically my clock changes, but we're gonna see how many people be late for church every, every year, it's always funny. All right, the uh, fishing game time, this is to do those, brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers. We're looking at 9.29 to 11.29 this morning and 9.57 to 11.57 tonight. Two good, uh, two good times to go. And today's gonna be a good day in outdoors. And you know, we're right ahead, a little bit ahead of that front. If you, uh, you tell your boss you wanna leave around lunchtime and uh, hit the water, it won't be a bad idea. It's gonna be some, I've heard some great reports on redfish this week uh, again. And we'll talk about that during the fishing report. Let's take a break and be right back. Okay, welcome back. A couple of announcements and all kinds of things going on here in the outdoors in springtime. Right here in the Panhandle, let's take a look at this one, first one to talk about. The Bay High Wrestling Team, uh, uh, Coach Deaton does a great job with, it, with these guys and, and uh, they work hard. And they're having, they've done this before, this is a fundraiser, uh, Spring Fling Bass Tournament Fundraiser. Listen, $2,000 guaranteed first place. And it's gonna be, uh, that's the details, it's gonna be Lake Seminole, Saturday, March the 23rd. And you pretty well know the basic, uh, Outline of these tournaments, safe light to 3 p.m., lunch and coffee provided. Now, isn't that cool? All right, so support that group. They work hard and they're doing this. I love to see uh, people do this with fundraisers. Uh, well, you know, we, talk, we get a lot of fundraisers and all, and uh, I like for the young people to work for the fundraisers, if that makes sense. So you don't just you know, ask for a handout all the time, just go do some stuff, and, and most of them it will. So uh, support that. All right, moving on. I love this fishing, all my fishing pages I get to check out. This is the Apalachicola fishing page, but uh, I'm gonna show you a picture of the boat right here. Okay, there it is right there. Sullivan's Live Pinfish. Now, is that not an original boat? That's in action today. Uh, that's, uh, and what it is, uh, Mr. Sullivan passed away. Uh, this is from Jordan Cagle. Mr. Sullivan passed away recently, but Jordan's gonna keep the boat and get the phone number he had and trying to get the same phone number. So he'll, anyone, uh, they want the bait. There's a phone number there, and that's a uh, keep that tradition going of catching live bait and and, uh, and selling to the fish. You know that, that's a win-win situation. The guy can make can make a living doing something he loves to do, and we as fishermen uh, can buy live bait right there on the spot and go fishing instead of spending all the time trying to catch bait. So I always uh, appreciate folks doing that. Bit of Grantham sent this. Speaking of uh, things going on in outdoors. He's still seeing scrapes up there in Jackson County. We're gonna have to get bit on the show pretty soon. He had a kidney stone the other day, so hope you're doing better. All right, here we go. Here's your funny for today. Rebate. What do you do after a fish steals a worm off your hook? Okay, pass that on. I ran across this old picture. You know how much I've, I've talked about you know, grinding sugar cane, grinding sugar cane and making cane syrup. And uh, we do this with the 
with, with the family up there, the Clark family up there in West Gaston County. But this is how it originally started, and this is my memory from a kid. They would have a mule right here, or walk around in a circle. If you look close, you might not see it. they have a path, and he just walks around in a circle, and that turns the grinder, and that's how, and the little boy's there putting the sugar cane in there, and you see the sacks of the cane. But this is a, a Florida pioneer, or panhandle family, and that was originally how sugar cane was done. And, uh, a lot of y'all can uh, identify with that. All right, moving on. Captain Jason Shingler, this was a Wednesday, okay? He, now, this is Captain Jason Shingler. He tried for the mackerel. They aren't thick yet, but any day now, getting 67 degree water temps in the bay was a great time in tough conditions. So caught some mangroves and uh, released and didn't have too many picture opportunities. So we did get some mangroves, but uh, just, that's a report on the Spanish. They're not quite here, but right on the verge of it. Thank you, Jason. Uh, this is just, uh, this is interesting. I, I, I want to read the whole thing. This is a group of folks. They're deploying 35 satellite and acoustic tags in Cobia around Naples. Now, it's not unusual to, you know, tag the fish and all, but they're putting the uh, satellite uh, uh, thing on them. So here's the different people doing it. And ironically, uh, you read them down. I read this last night. They've already had two fish lose their tags. They may have been cut off by sharks or whatever, but uh, anyway, here, here's some pictures right here of what they're doing. Okay, here's releasing it right there. See that blue thing on the bottom? That's a transmitter. Okay, so now they, they can follow them. There it is right there. That's a close-up of the trans satellite transmitter, and that will follow. That's, you know, that's what they started doing with the sharks on Shark Tracker, and now they're doing it on Cobia. So this is going to be some cool studies. And of course, the tag itself identifies if you catch the, t the fish, that will identify which one it is, and of course, all the record and all. And to release them now, that's sort of going to be on, on the back of that that fish. It's going to be a, I don't know. It may I, I thought it might attract some uh, attract some uh, sharks. See that blue thing. This is sort of an outdoor question. Uh, people talk about this about riding in the back of a pickup truck. And the law has changed, but here's according to Florida law, I looked it up last night, adults 18 and older can ride in the bed of a pickup truck without a seatbelt as long as they are sitting flat on the bed and not elevated on any surface like a cooler or cardboard box. Okay, so you understand that because that happens a lot here in Florida Panhandle. You know, jump in the truck and let's run down there, but you have to sit flat in the back of the truck and I, with the spring breakers. I, I brought that up because of the spring breakers and, and also uh, you can't sit on an ice chest. And it's so normal, it's so normal. How many times have we done that growing up and through the years just sitting on the, on the ice chest and riding down a little bit down the road or something, but we uh, can't do it. And you got to ride back there at all, you got to be 18 or more, all right? I'll take a quick break, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. I'm gonna try to squeeze this in right here. This is uh, Brandon Barton. They saw this uh, flounder. This is the reason I want to show it to you because it's at a kiddie pool at the state park. It's a small flounder, but it's gonna show you. Uh, let me see if I can get it going, Jeff. Is it up? Uh, all right, here we go. They saw, this is at the kiddie pool, and you can see uh, the water's beautiful. That was this week, uh, early part of the week. Let me see. There it is, right there. Look at the shallow water. Isn't that cool? And uh, like I said, it wasn't a big one, but anyway, so anyway, that's, uh, thank you, Brandon, for, for putting that on Panama City Fishing. Now, the other thing I want to show you, I want to go to, to uh, Shark Tracker. It's funny because I see the other TV stations are now showing Shark Tracker. I get a kick out of it because that great white is in the neighborhood. All right, so here we go. We'll go here with our Shark Tracker. We've gotten pretty good at this over the years. Let me see. So here it is. Uh, you can see. We're going to go ahead and get it up. Uh, this, you know, that's moved since last night, I swear. I, he's moved. Okay, anyway, let's check this one out. This is Kiji or KG. Uh, let's show his track. Boom, <laughs> has, has he gone around? Uh, I'm going to go back to his age. Uh, wait a minute. He is, he's not, he's a juvenile, great white, and really is a young, nine feet, seven inches, and, and a male. So, okay, let's go to track again. So, Man, he's getting around. He's tagged way up there in Nova Scotia. He's tagged up here. 
He'd make a couple of trips back home, I guess, to see the folks and all. But here he is. Let's check him on them down here. This was uh, March the 4th, a couple of days ago. You see the date on that? You may not see it. March the 4th, uh, he was right here off the coast of uh, the Florida Panhandle, closer to Cape San Blas than anywhere. So that was that, was that one. So uh, I wanted to, uh, all right, now I want to go back. And it is, don't weigh that big, it's only 578 pounds. And let's see, I'm gonna go back. And there's another one. This one, okay, is he, Rose, she, Rose, a female. This is a 600 pounder. And this is, she's 10 foot long. Look, look at Rose, because Rose has been up in the neighborhood. In fact, March the 5th, a day after Kiji came up, Rose was up here. And, uh, you see where, see where they're headed up there? I don't know, you know, it was like a little barrier. They won't get toward Pensacola, but they sure like coming toward Cape San Blas. And again, look, look at all those soundings. They, is that not amazing? How? Uh, I want to look at something real curious. Way up here up north. Let's see. That was in August of 23. So in August, they're up there too. So it seems like in the wintertime, they're down here. In the summertime, they go north. Okay. So that, that takes care of our shark tracker. I just want to share share those with you because uh, I, I get a kick out of it. I know y'all are interested in it. These are great white sharks, okay? So now I want to talk about, I've been trying to do this all week long. We've had some really good guests on. And, and by the way, we'll have some good guests coming on uh, Monday. We'll have the Coast Guard Auxiliary coming on and they're gonna be talking about a safe boating class next Saturday. Uh, and that's gonna be interesting to talk about and, and to share with you. But here are the things we're talking about. Uh, March to do. I'm gonna go through it pretty fast. I always like it. each month I like to show you things to do here in the Panhandle. Number one, I think about in March, go camping. It's really, it's not hot, it's not cold. March is a great time to camp. Number two, check your trot lines because they were catching, you know, talking about Bill, Bill and Bill were catching them in the daytime and I've got some old trot lines and I know I have to replace them. So I'm, I'm personally telling you what I'm doing and I know you can do these things too. If you don't have a trot line, Go get one and make one up, it's cool. Of course, uh, every month uh, in the springtime, I'll say this, check your boat, check your boat trailer. And number four, get, get your game camera. I, I'm going this afternoon, I'm headed up to Quincy and then I'm gonna stop back by Granddaddy's old place and get my game camera from there. Maybe uh, I'm gonna take my snake book, boots and I'm gonna be looking for some uh, copperhead. Uh, there'll be some copperheads moving around, so I'm gonna, I got a good afternoon plan. I'm going to have a lunch with my high school classmates and uh, spend some time at the granddaddy's place. I'm looking forward to it. Number five, look for Spanish. You just heard a great report from Captain Jason Shingler. He's a captain and done it his, uh, his whole grown life. His son's a captain, so he knows. He's out there looking for the Spanish, but he, what did he say Wednesday? They were not in Wednesday. It's going to rain tomorrow, but this time next week, I'm going to be telling you about some Spanish mackerel. Uh, number six, Enjoy the enjoy nature bloom. After this rain this weekend and all, next week the azalea is going to really start popping out. That's what I'm looking for next. We've talked about the Japanese magnolia, but you're going to start seeing some great azalea blooms. I got a couple of little blooms myself. Number seven, I'll throw this word down. Finalize your tackle box. <laughs> get it get it ready. It needs to be ready by next week. Finalize it. And have it, <laughs> number eight, <clears throat> red horse suckers. Uh, they're still uh, catching red horse suckers, especially early part of March. Number nine, I put quail in a question mark because I've only been on one quail hunt this winter and it's very uh, uncomfortable for me to do that. Stan Kirkland and I went on a great trail hunt with David Taylor and, uh, Ran and, uh, and Randy and we just had a great time with them, but uh, I haven't heard much from Freddie York lately or some other quail hunt buddies. And number 10, uh, Find your bait supplier. Like I know we, if I'm headed to Howard Creek, I know I'm gonna stop it. We all wiggle bait and tackle and get the freshest bait possible. Also know I'm gonna do more weight fishing and I'm gonna start looking more uh, for, for uh, little bait pods. And I see them all the time, but I never pay attention to them. So anyway, find, find your bait and uh, know, know where your crickets are and all that. So that, that takes care of things. Speaking of, of Monday's show uh, with, with his Coast Guard Auxiliary, I have a, I have a lot of respect for, for the folks over there with things they do. And I was going to show you uh, a couple of things. Real quick, I don't know if I have time. I'm going to take time to do this because this is important. From the FWC, they're, they're, uh, 
this is interesting. They're doing an interactive wildlife management recreation finder. This is just for recreation now. And uh, what they're doing uh, right here, you can find it, you go to YouTube. I went to YouTube last night with a little two minute uh, video for folks that don't know much what to do. And, and here, here's the areas, all these are, okay, they're either uh, FWC land areas or co-op. The blue is land areas, okay? So all across the state, I zoomed in on the Panhandle. Here we are in the Panhandle from Tallahassee to Pensacola. All these places you can visit, public land. Uh, this is awesome, all this area up in here. So uh, you can go interactive with it. And, and uh, here's a YouTube video I watched last night. It's two minutes and 36 seconds. It's really good if you want to go to YouTube and look it up. It's called a WMA Recreation Finder Tutorial. And it tells you all the things you can do uh, at, at different, all kinds of different things you can do with these places. So uh, even if you're not a big hunter or a big fisherman, you can just go out and use those. So uh, find, find out about them. All right. Talk about good things. Let's get ready for our drawing from Talking Dog Seafood. And, and uh, they have some great fresh seafood down there and, and hardworking folks, and they do a lot for our community. So we appreciate Talking Dog. The winner of the $20 gift certificate. Let's throw it up a lot. Okay. And uh, I reached at the bottom and pulled it up from the bottom. And all the way from Youngstown, Pearl Vi. Okay, Ralph and Pearl. Uh, I'll come down to Tropical Dock this afternoon or this, this morning and get some fresh seafood. And the winner, the Big Red Snapper from Cottondale, Dawson Barnes, Youngstown and Cottondale. I'll put 231 uh, corridor. All right, let's take our break. We'll be right back with our famous Friday fishing forecast. Okay, well, welcome back. Let's take a look at our the big thing is we want to take a look at our whole map and everything, but before we do that, let's talk about our sponsors that bring us this to us every Friday morning. Jessica Ling Insurance and Financial Group up there in Lynn Haven and Matt Andrews of Hammerdown Roofing. We appreciate uh, their support of this, uh, of this very important segment uh, all week long. We sort of end up the week with this, telling you what you can do on the weekends, what you can be successful in, or, or what are some things going on. So. Uh, and I always sit down on Thursday night, but I spend some time on this. Uh, it's, it's an enjoyable time, but I try to make it as accurate as possible. I get feedback from, from these captains like Jason Singer's uh, Spanish Mackerel Report from Wednesday, and then I uh, uh, get some other reports. So the first thing I wrote down, <laughs> we've talked about it, the third fog, you know, we had March 1st and 2nd, boom, boom, two fogs right away. And the other fogs, with this rain coming in, we hadn't quite had it. I'm anticipating one day next week, one morning next week, we're going to have our third fog. So be aware of that. And it's going to be a, a lot of people haven't heard about it, but the third fog is important. And where, let's, uh, so we'll talk about Spanish, where, where to go on Spanish mackerel. Uh, also, talking about the weather now, it's going to rain tonight, rain tomorrow, and there's going to be a cool snap. So that's going to affect the fishing a little bit. So. Uh, just, just be aware of that. Where to go Spanish, let's talk about where to go Spanish mackerel fishing for next weekend or next week after the cool snap. Right here in Destin, I, I'm just gonna show it briefly. In the past here, it's not focused really good, but in the past, you get past Crab Island right there in the center. They, the Spanish go more toward the west area once they come into Choctatchee Bay, and I think it'd be called all the fresh water on the eastern end. Okay, so let's go over here to uh, San Andrew Bay system. And of course, they're coming here in the past. <laughs> Only way to get in, <laughs> only way to get out. They're gonna come in and pass, and really, we've talked about it before, uh, this whole area here, and I, I zeroed in, but right there in the center of the screen, you just get in your boat, and you can sort of make a big loop, uh, and if you have your boat, you don't have a boat, then right here in the center of the screen, Spanish Point right there, Spanish Macro Point. And then, of course, St. Joe Bay, it's more of the buoy line down here in St. Joe Bay as you're coming out, uh, the buoy line there. So uh, and that's up here north of the Cape, okay? And Apalachicola Bay, and actually, they're gonna be catching more in Apalachicola Bay uh, as you come in there, uh, out, out of the pass, St. George Island Pass. And also, you'll be able to catch them in the, uh, in, in the uh, St. George Island Pass. So th that's the main areas to go. And we'll talk more about it in more detail next week. Also, right now, squid bite has been, squid bite has been strong this past week. Some really nice squid caught. Uh, here locally, and uh, I know the guys have got a freezer full of squid right now, and they ate some of them fresh. Also, right now, uh, flounder, you, you saw the flounder earlier, they're coming in, 
and a lot easier, you can catch them with hook and line, so folks are, are flounder fishing now uh, because they're not quite ready to be gigged. And it's, uh, Joe Eddy, I showed the picture of Joe Eddy the other day catching, uh, the gigging too last weekend. Surf fishing, uh, still early for Pompano. I tell you what, they're catching out of surfers, they big bull reds, and, and they're doing a good job of catching some bull reds. Now, you will, I've, I've seen a lot of Pompano pictures, but those are actually coming in from the, uh, they're actually coming in from the, uh, from the domestic, what I call domestic uh, tribe that stays around. They're, you know, they, they stay here all winter long, and the ones that are catching are the ones that have been here. They're not the migratory uh, ones we talk about a lot. Okay, now also, uh, I wrote down, bay, the bay fishing itself, the water is still clear. Even with this rain, the water is really clear. It's in, ended up being a winter clear, and as the water temperature starts heating up, it might bring more organisms in it and sort of get a little more cloudy. But right now, it's really clear. Sight fishing for reds have been strong, and it's just a great time to do that. St. Joe Bay, St. Joe Bay has especially been clear. And I haven't mentioned, I'll tell you what I haven't mentioned in a good while, is Black's Island. But fishing around Black's Island down here, all this whole, whole area down here is really good for trout. And just find those channels for the redfish, and that's just a good place to go. And you know, like I say, I'm getting some good reports from down there. Also, right down, bridge fishing again will be good. And I would mention the bridge. I talk to folks down in, and uh, down there in Carabell, and, and the bridge fishing on the East Point Bridge. We've shown it many times. Has been good. Bridge fishing is really good, even in rainy weather. If it's not lightning, and we're supposed to have a little bit of stormy weather tomorrow, but if it's not lightning, you know, you can get up under a, a, a shelter and all, and do some serious fishing. And, and uh, the sheephead bite, they're still catching sheephead, believe it or not. Fresh water, uh, let's get real quick. Uh, it's going to be high water when it's coming out of the east, uh, bass. Uh, Charles Garner, the big thing is catching bass in these small lakes and small ponds. This past week, Charles Garner has caught the dickens out of them. I, I've seen several other pictures. The male bass is out over there fanning on the beds. You know, we have, the, we have a new moon coming Monday night, a new moon. So that means two weeks away will be the full moon. So this is going to be, if you can get out this weekend and do some bass fishing in these ponds, it's going to be good. The crappie fish at Lake Tower are still going strong. Uh, and I hope, uh, hope they save some of them up there. A lot of people are catching them. Uh, let me see. It, it's really a, uh, it's going to be, a, I wrote down the last thing, it's going to be a tough weekend to get outdoors and do stuff. But you still can get some things done. Uh, personally, I, I'm going to uh, try to get a lot of stuff done this afternoon before the weather comes in and looking forward to that. And I'm going to do what, one of my to-do things. I'm going to finalize my tackle box. I'm going to be ready to go because uh, next week or, or next weekend, whatever, it's going to be finalized and be ready to go. So uh, all these things are important. I'm going to wrap it up. We've had a great week. We've had some good guests and uh, been enjoyable. If you want to come on Panhandle Outdoors and have some great outdoor stories or things to share, touch base with me because this, this show is about us, the real people of Florida Panhandle. And we have so many new viewers, and I appreciate these new viewers. And, and if they have an appreciation of learning our, the old traditions and things that have been done here for generations, and it, it's just been a great interaction to have our Pan and Outdoors family and our Pan and Outdoors team all come together. It's been, been real special to me year after year. So I've always appreciated it. I have a deep appreciation of Jeff Peck I'm here every day doing amazing things over here, and Gail helping me. And, uh, it's just, a, it's just a wonderful thing we've got going here. We're going to keep it going strong, and, uh, and the feedback we'll get from you is, is the key to the whole thing. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up for the week. Y'all do something good this weekend for, for someone else, and uh, a lot of y'all do that and share it with me. And have a great weekend, and enjoy the outdoors. Take care of it, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.